Hey everybody, Timothy Karambat, founder of Ramp. And in the previous video, we went over how to do the Ramp one-click deploy, uh, where we click this button and we got some transaction hashes and a contract address, and we successfully deployed and verified our contract on the Ethereum Rinkeby network. So the next thing that we're going to jump into is managing your contract. Now, managing your contract is really simple. You can click this button. Or if you go back to the ramp homepage, there is this command symbol, you would just click on that. And it'll bring you to this page. Now, what is this page? This page is essentially like your command center for your project. The way this works is that since you are the owner of the contract, since you were the one that deployed it, you have essentially admin ability on all of the functions of this contract. So for example, if we want to close minting to the public, we would click this button and you would see that we're gonna get a notification to stop minting. Uh, I'm gonna reject that because I want mint to be open. And uh, we can also open allow list minting. We can then actually change the mint fee on the fly, change the limit of how many mints, of how many tokens someone can purchase in one transaction, and most importantly, admin mint a token. In the other tab, you'll see that we have allow list addresses. Now, as a like just rule of thumb, you should have at least two addresses for allow listing. The reason for this, I won't get into on a technical level, but just know that you should have at least two addresses allow listed if you are going to use the allow list minting function. Now, this is hopefully like, you know, you should have way more than two addresses that you need to, you know, allow list. Um, if you have 10,000 addresses because you have like some sign up sheet or something that you ran in your Discord, you can actually use our bulk tool and just paste in all the addresses line by line. Uh, you can just copy it from Excel or Google Sheets, paste it in here, click submit, and it will actually automatically add these addresses into your uh, whitelist and it will, it will prompt you then for a transaction for you to update your uh, contract. It's quite easy to do. Um, we'll actually go for it, go through it right now. Uh, so let's go to Vanity ETH. This is just a, a little simple tool that you can use to generate addresses. Uh, you would obviously have real addresses. So let's just paste some in here, uh, generate a new one. And I'll show you what happens, like kind of what's the easiest way to go about doing this. Uh, cause this part can be tricky. So that in there and we'll click save changes and you'll see that it's going to prompt us with a transaction. What is this transaction? This is updating the Merkle route. You don't really need to know what that means, but it basically is the thing that allows your allow list to work. If we click reject, these addresses will actually be saved. And if we refresh the page and go to addresses, you'll see that we have three addresses, but it says that our current allow list needs to be synced to the blockchain. Well, you would just click sync and you would have to execute that same function again, which is updating the Merkle root. So this is just a really easy way of uh, managing a allow list of any size. If this was 10,000 addresses long, it would work just the same and it would still cost you like a dollar to update. So just something to know. In the next tab, we have the withdraw tab. Now, this will show you the current balance on your contract and who is going to get paid what. Now, if I click this, there's no balance on the contract, so this transaction will fail. But once we pay for a mint, we will then be able to withdraw money and people will get paid proportionally. So analytics right now is actually in a private, uh, private access feature. So if we click on it, uh, you know, it's not something that I can display to you guys right now. Uh, but it will be available in the future and it'll be able to tell you so many things uh, besides just a floor price. Um, you'll be able to know essentially uh, how many people are trying to mint and, you know, for example, left because gas was too high or they didn't have enough money or something like that. Um, basically, just being able to tell you more about your community than you would really be ever able to know from any kind of, uh, you know, on on chain events. OK, so. Now we're going to talk about listing a token on OpenSea. So we have a custom smart contract. So how do we list something on OpenSea to where the tokens will show up? Well, we're going to go and copy our address. This is my address. You can send these to a friend. We're on Rinkeby. It doesn't really matter. Let's mint the first five tokens to us just because. 
So we're going to go to Mint. And you're going to see that it just says contract interaction. Really what we're doing is we are sending, we are buying ourselves the first five tokens on our contract. So I'm going to click confirm. And we are going to wait for this transaction to process. And we'll even view it on Etherscan. And just so you know, you cannot list a contract on OpenSea unless you have at least one token minted. You must have at least one token minted. This rule applies to all NFT marketplaces. You have to have at least one token minted. That's why you may notice in some uh, in some NFT projects, they actually self mint a token to themselves that just doesn't have any data on it, um, just so that they can have their collection page uh, be present. But that's really besides the point. You can see that if we go to the view block explorer, once this node is properly indexed, it's going to show that we purchased tokens one through five. And we'll wait for this to load. Okay. And you'll see that we have purchased tokens one, two, three, four, and five. That's great. Now, how do we go and get these tokens and the contract and all of this stuff? How do we let OpenSea know that it exists? Well, that's actually quite easy. Copy your contract address, go to testnets.opensea.io, and you should be able to go to your collections. And oh my gosh, it already found it. Okay, well, sometimes OpenSea is not so eager to find your projects. So you would go to OpenSea, testnets.opensea.io slash get listed. You are live on a testnet. We are on the Rinkaby chain and you would paste in your contract address. And you would see that our name has automatically been brought in from our contract. The website actually is ramp.xyz, which was the website we put in. Our royalty would be already set. We actually have five items already showing. And oh, look at that. We actually even messed up our layering. See, this is why you should always be very careful when you're doing your la layering. I have my laser eyes going over the uh, under the hat. They should be going over the hat whatever it's a test contract and this is why we test things actually um so you'll see that the first five came out perfectly fine and it's called lazy ramp apes number one if we click on the image we'll go into the asset and we go to properties we have all of our properties now you'll notice that the percentages for their rarity are not here why are they not here that is because testnet OpenSea does not calculate percentages for rarity it's just a i guess a waste of time for them to do that they do appear in production like real OpenSea. So just something to know. You'll see that we actually have our collection already here. We have details, contract, ERC721, Rinkaby, token ID number one. And it was just minted from the null address to us about three minutes ago. So now our contract is live on OpenSea. This process that we just went through of deploying a contract, uh, verifying a contract, minting ourselves a token and listing it on OpenSea are all 100% the same as doing it as when you deploy to mainnet. So if instead of going to testnets.opensea, you would just go to OpenSea.io slash get listed. And also just a added uh, feature because plenty of people ask about this. Because I am connected to OpenSea and I am also the same person who owns this contract, you can actually go to edit and it'll ask us probably to sign yeah and now i can add my logo image my banner image change the name change the slug change the description add categories yada 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 do all of this stuff and even delete the collection if you own every single item um but you can do all of that you can manage your OpenSea collection page um rare if it's on OpenSea, rareable has probably already picked it up uh, looks rare, I believe, is the same process. I believe they look at other marketplaces. So if you list it on OpenSea, it'll probably pop up on every other marketplace as well. Uh, but yeah, that is the that is how easy it is to deploy your contract, mint yourself a token, you know, manage your allow list. Uh, you know, if you need to withdraw, if you have a balance, you would click withdraw. Um, just like you know, this is this is your command center. So yeah, uh, it's that simple. And in the next video, we're actually going to talk about your embeddable mint button and what that is and how powerful it is and what that means for you and your community. So we'll see you in the next video.